Hello, everybody. Today, I want to teach you how to represent negative decimals on a number line. And so that is what I'm going to get right to here. Um, we dealt with negative fractions on a number line yesterday. Um, this is one of the what should you be forgetting today questions. So if I wanted to show negative 3 eighths, say, on a number line, it's less than zero. So I put it on the negative side of the number line. Um, if that is 1, I partitioned my area between 0 and 1 into eighths. 1 eighths, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths. And negative 3 eighths is negative 1, 2, 3 eighths away from 0. So it's a little closer to 0 than to negative 1. So what about a decimal that's negative? Where would you put that on the number line? If you would, uh, pause the video here and jot your best ideas down on a piece of scratch paper. Uh, how would you show negative 4 and 6 tenths or negative 3 and 19 hundredths on a number line now? Okay. So now that you've given it a shot, uh, we can get to it. I'm going to tell you today how to represent negative decimals on a number line. And I'm going to start with the ones you just did. So if I want to show negative 4 and 6 tenths on a number line, before I even get to like the real deal, let me think about it here a little bit. If I were to do positive, let's momentarily think about doing positive four and six tenths. Um, I would start at zero, one, two, three, four, five, and positive four and six tenths would be past four, but not all the way to five. You'll notice I keep saying this four and six tenths. If you know how to say it, you know how to put it on a number line. So what I want to do is I would put four and six tenths on here. So I would partition between four and five. I would partition it into tenths. One tenths, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten tenths is the next number. So what I would really do is take four, then I would partition that next part into tenths and do six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six would be that one right there. It's more than four, it's less than five, closer to five. Uh, that'd be for positive four and six tenths, however, though. I want to do negative four and six tenths. It's going to work the same way. Since I know the number's negative, let me go back to negative here. Uh, I'm going to put my zero pretty far over here on the number line because I know I need to go pretty far negative to get to negative four and six tenths. So rather than putting it right in the middle, I may kind of put it over there to leave myself more negative space and less positive space on my number line. Uh, and I'm going to keep going number one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and it's past negative four, right? So negative four and no tenths would be there. I'm going to actually have to go out to negative five even to have space for it. So it's not all the way to negative five, but it's like I go to negative four. And then I keep going another negative six tenths toward negative five. So now I'm going to put in my tenths. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten tenths is the next number, negative five. And I find my space there. So what I'm really going to kind of do is go like negative four. And then go another negative six tenths. One, two, three, four, five. So it'd be to there. So it's like I go negative four. And then I go negative six tenths, and I end up where I want to be. It's right there. It's between negative four and negative five, but closer to negative five than negative four. What about this one? Negative three and nineteen hundredths. That's how you pronounce that. This is tenths. This is hundredths. Negative three and nineteen hundredths. Um, when you go out to hundredths, you're really going to have to get very small with your partitions, hundred, hundredth, hundred partitions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start and I'm going to have a problem almost on purpose here. So same thing, I'm going to put zero way over here, have negative one, negative two, negative three, and I have to go past negative three out to negative four. And this is just going to get so small. To do hundreds. So I would do my tenths first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here's like negative three and one tenth. If I didn't have the nine, if 
but then I've also got to go 100. So I really need to partition this little area between 1 tenth and 2 tenths into 10 more parts, which I just don't have the space to do. So in the case when I end up with that, um, I kind of start over. And I, because I'm going to need so much space, I think to myself, I'm going to go to negative 3. And then it's past negative 3, closer to negative 4. So the only numbers I'm going to put on my number line are negative 3 and, number, and negative 4. And I'm going to let my whole number line fall between there. Because I'm, otherwise, I'm not going to have room. So now if I do this into 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5's in the middle, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tenths is here. So here's negative 3. Negative 3 and 1 tenth is the next one. So this is negative 3 and 1 tenth right here. But I have to go another 9 hundredths farther than that. So I'm going to go past negative 3 and 1 tenth but not all the way to negative 3 and 2 tenths. 3 and 19 hundredths is between negative 3 and 1 tenth and negative 3 and 2 tenths. It's in here. It's in this little space here. So what I need to do is partition this into hundredths, into 10. I'm not going to do the whole area into hundredths. That would take forever. But I am going to go real little. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tenths. Those are hundredths right there. They're really little. Uh, and so what I really want to do now is say I go to negative 3 and then to negative 3 and 1 tenth and then to the ninth one all the way way over here where we just put it. And that's negative 3 and 19 hundredths. Really tough to do. Really tough spot for it. Um, all right, let's try two in your notes here if we could. So go ahead and pause here and get your note page ready, and we will add this in now. So this one you'll notice only goes out to tenths right here, three and eight tenths. If it goes out to three and eight tenths, tenths aren't too hard to partition. So I'm not going to stress about the uh, hundredths thing yet. Um, so I'm going to start my zero way over here, negative one, negative two negative three. I'm going to have to go past the negative three. This is almost negative four. It's close to negative four. I'm going to put that way out over here. And so what I really want to do, if you kind of want to do this, is like I want to go to negative three, and then I want to go to where eight tenths ends up. I'm going to leave it kind of um, not super clear where it's going to be because I haven't partitioned it yet. So this is tenths, so I'm going to partition it into ten tenths here. So that's like three and one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five should be in the middle, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and three and eight tenths should be the eighth one. As I said before, almost negative four, but not quite. It's negative three and another negative eight tenths, and I'm out there. The second one is tough because this involves hundredths and tenths. This is two and 73 hundredths. This is one of the reasons you always hear me obsessing about how I say it. Um, I don't say 2.73 because if I can say it correctly, this hundredths is really important here. I know how much I need to divide it into. This knowing that this is three and eight tenths help me know to divide this part into eight tenths to find where I go. And that's one of the reasons I'm so careful with how I say it. When I do this, if I try to put a lot of numbers, don't write this down, if I try to put all my numbers on here, I'm gonna go past negative two, almost to negative three. There's no way I'm gonna have space for those little hundredths in here. So what I do is I just don't draw any of this on my number line. I only draw this area. I know it's between those two numbers. So that's all I'm going to draw on my number line. Otherwise, I can't do those little hundredths just right. So I'm going to back up. And I know I'm going to go past negative 2, but I'm not going to make it to negative 3. And I'm going to divide that up. 
So the first thing I'm going to do, so now I've got my negative 2. It's like I come over to here. Now I've got to go 7 tenths. That's pretty far. So I'm going to divide this into tenths. So here's 5 in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So those are my tenths right here. If you kind of for your notes, if you want to say those are tenths, that's okay. Um, so 2 and 7 tenths is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is negative 2 and 7 tenths. This is negative 2 and 8 tenths. And I'm in between those. I'm past 2 and 7 tenths by 3 hundredths. So I'm only going to divide that little area into my hundredths. I'm not going to do the whole thing. You can do the whole thing if you really love partitioning. Um, I don't. I'm going to try to fit 10 little hundredths in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Depends when I'm there. So once I draw those, I need to go out to the third one. 2 and 7 tenths and 1, 2, 3 hundredths right there. Closer to that than to that. And that's how you do it. A bit to do, uh, but hopefully not too bad. Again, if you can say it right, you can do it right. If you know that's tenths, you'll divide this into tenths. If you know that's hundredths, you can get down to your hundredths. And hopefully that makes a lot of sense of where you put them. Um, that, y'all, is how you put negative decimals on a number line. Hope it makes all the sense in the world to you. Uh, that is it for I do and we do, and we'll get on to the rest after that.